Hello, my name is Will Strauss. I'm a principal analytics consultant and Sigma expert at PhD. And today's installment of Sigma Made Simple. I want to talk about histograms. I love histograms. They're great data visualizations to better understand population or general data distribution. You could do distribution analysis, which is really the focus of them. And the key to creating an effective histogram is understanding how the bin functions work in Sigma. The underlying data that we're working with here are sales from a stadium. So that includes concessions and things at the, uh, the pro shop. So each sale is going to have an order number and the sum of revenue. What we want to find out here is what is a normal sale? We want to see the general distributions, not just what the average sale amount is basket value or what the highest and the lowest is. What is the distribution? So to do that, we use the bin functions. In this first example, I'm showing bin fixed. The fixed reference for the function here is that we're setting a value for each step. And I pasted the calculation down here below. I like pulling it up here as well. Um, so in the bin fixed, the bin fixed function, we're showing sum of revenue. The step or the space in between each bin is 10. We set a max of 600. I basically looked on the data and saw that the largest possible sale was nearly $600. And then 60 is the total number of possible bins. The bin range function allows you to set some irregular ranges. Now, I created this calculation just to make sure that I could copy them. So I just went in and manually created each step of, of 10 at a time. Let's say I take a skip here and remove all of these top buckets and we'll just get down to here and we click update. Now, everything that was in that larger bucket. So you see on the left here, there's this slight small tail. You're able to say, okay, anything that was over a hundred dollars, we could put into one bucket. That's really the difference between the bin fixed and the bin range is you either want to take uniform steps and set a limit to how many steps or how high the value is, or with the range, you can create customized differences between each step. There are certainly plenty of different ways that you can visualize histograms from like just the classic bar chart, the combo chart with the bar in line, which is a nice way to represent two values. I happen to like making a full histogram here where you can use a heat map again, following that same bin function, and then you have the same distribution analysis for each axis in the bar chart in the top and right. And it really gives us almost a three-dimensional view of what the distribution analysis is. Again, I really, really like using histograms. I think they're effective visualizations particularly when you're doing data quality analysis or if you're doing a QA analysis as part of a new Snowflake connection or a new data source. These are visualizations and tools that I use a lot. Thank you very, very much for following Sigma Made Simple on LinkedIn so you can get updated with all of our new videos. And thank you again. Have a nice day.